Lead writer leaves Dying Light 2, Path of Exile 2 has been delayed to 2022 and PUBG 2.0 is in the works. Happy New Year everybody and welcome to a brand new video of Gamer Connect. My name is Gimin Manis and let me run you down to the top gaming news of this week. Dying Light 2 was supposed to come out last year somewhere around February to March but due to pandemic the game was delayed without any specific date. Now earlier this week, lead writer Pavel Selinger left the company. He mentioned in LinkedIn about the departure saying that he will be rooting for Techland, the company who made Dying Light 2 and hoping that Dying Light 2 and the other future games get all the success. Techland also confirmed the departure saying that his role was already replaced by someone else so that none of the progression over making the game is disrupted. Techland also wants fans to know that the position of art director has not been threatened and has been leading the production of this very game ever since 2019 to make sure that they bring out the best game possible. This definitely says that the game development has no disruption whatsoever but we still don't know how long the game will take to develop, we don't know how far it has gone and we don't even know what the release date of the game will be, whether it's this year or next year, which looks like it, it's going to be next year but we still don't have the official release date. Dying Light 2 showed its gameplay trailer back in 2019 and it looked fantastic but we still need to wait for its official release date. Dying Light is possibly one of the best zombie games of all time with parkour and some sort of satisfaction while killing these zombies. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War will be adding more new content with their mid-season updates. The game will be adding new multiplayer modes such as Gunfight Blueprints similar to that of Modern Warfare and Dirty Bomb Doors. But along with that, they will be also adding a new mode, a complete brand new mode called Dropkick. This is a mode where you will fight for the control of nuclear codes in a 6v6 match in Sanatorium. Both the teams will fight for this code and then have an objective to just set off the nuke. That is absolutely interesting. Just set off the nuke, why not? They're also adding something new with zombies is where every zombie you kill, you will have a timer and in that timer, if you cannot kill a zombie, you will die. It is similar to the mode in Modern Warfare called Cranked and it is here also mentioned as Cranked. Apart from these changes, people who are playing Warzone are having a lot of hard time playing the game just because there's one particular gun which has not been nerfed enough because it still is overpowerful. This gun is called DMR which is a sniper rifle but it has a great rate of fire and usually people die with one shot. Now after a lot of complaints, Call of Duty has nerfed down the damage of DMR but still people are able to get kills in one shot and if you don't get the kill in one shot, the second bullet has the name written on it. A lot of professionals have also confirmed that DMR is still one of the most powerful guns in Warzone which is kind of annoying because even though it has been nerfed a little bit with the damage, it still stays the same. Which game do you play the most? Is it Black Ops Cold War multiplayer or is it Warzone? Let me know in the comments below. Action RPG fans must be looking forward to Path of Exile 2, the sequel of Path of Exile but unfortunately, you won't see the game come out this year. During a phone interview about the upcoming endgame expansion of Path of Exile 1, studio head Chris Wilson says that the pandemic has affected the production. He says that due to the borders being closed for the New Zealand, they are not able to hire people internationally and that has slowed things down. Also working from home has slowed down the production for the game and they are trying their best to bring it as quickly as possible. When asked whether the game will be coming out in 2022, he says that this is more accurate but since everyone is working from home, it is taking a bit of time and that's the only reason why this upcoming expansion is also delayed. But still the fans of Path of Exile won't be disappointed because this upcoming expansion which is unfortunately delayed is coming out on January 15th called Echoes of Atlas. This expansion is set to bring a bundle of new environments to the endgame expansion, several are assets from Path of Exile 2 itself, along with that new bosses evoking Path of Exile 2's new aesthetic. This new expansion is the largest update for Path of Exile this year as the studio works on the production of Path of Exile 2. Regardless of the delay of Path of Exile 2 which apparently is coming out in next year, we still have content for Path of Exile that's coming this very week so people will still have some kind of enjoyment but I hope that the production goes well and the game comes out next year. CD Projekt Red has officially denied the statements from someone who claimed to be a developer of Cyberpunk and said that the game had a huge overhaul and over 50,000 dialogues have been removed and most of the apartments that were closed were lootable and a significant portion of the game was rewritten and the large portions of cut content 
will be back on June this year. This statement was carried in the air due to a statement given by the senior level designer earlier saying that cutting features and scope is a very normal part of development. He says that some of the ideas that we give are looking really great in paper but when we implement it, it is not as good and that's why we remove them. The statement gained tracking over Reddit where with the use of a mod, a full voice romance option with a dialogue was enabled to which CD Projekt Red said to Eurogamer that the voice lines were only recorded so we could avoid missing something by mistake which would require future recordings. CDPR in the end denies everything that has been mentioned over Reddit is simply not true. A lot of things are happening with CDPR unfortunately, with, uh, especially the lawsuit with the botched game that they released to all platforms. It is definitely a hard time for CDPR right now. hi Studios who have made games such as Smite, Paladins and Rogue Company have stated that they have more plans this year for all the games. For them 2020 has been successful and a massive year for the launch of Rogue Company and long running Paladins and Smite are getting even more new updates. According to Steam chart, Smite had around 19,000 concurrent players and Paladins had around 15,000 concurrent players. The Rogue Company is however an Epic Store exclusive, so we cannot get the exact numbers based on the concurrent players, but a lot of people have said that it's a very innovative style of game. But this year, Hyder Studios say that they are adding more new updates and content to each of these games. For Smite, Season 8 Dawn of Babylon will feature the addition of new evolving Babylonian Pantheon Conquest map, new gods, new battle pass, new collaborations and plenty more esport actions over the year. Paladins is bringing its Season 4 Calamity, which will see new champions, more frequent updates, all new limited time events, event passes and more. The first champion of the year will be Yagorath, who was teased for years in Paladins lore. Rogue Company will have four seasons of cross-play shooter action this year, with new rogues, new maps such as Hollows, new events, and much more. Hyrule Studios is making sure that all these games are getting more content and more updates because of course the player base is growing as we saw with the concurrent player numbers and they are making sure that these content updates are uh, you know consistent and so people can enjoy all of these updates that they're bringing on to each one of these games as these games are somewhat different genres than each other which is absolutely phenomenal also another cool thing about these games that is they are free to play so anybody can try them out if you don't have it already Paladins and Smite is available on Steam whereas Rogue Company is available on Epic Store. Apparently PUBG 2.0 and PUBG Mobile 2.0 are under development according to a report. This comes from Korean publication MTN. The sequel to the game is being developed and is named as XTRM and according to the publication they say that it could release this very year. The news add more weight as a data miner posted on Twitter that PUBG 2.0 will be developed by Seol HQ who is a developer of PUBG Lite. It also says that the game will have cross-platform across PCs, consoles and mobile. Well, I have no clue whether this all information is true, but data miners were able to figure out some of the information. So if that is possible, which means it somewhat is true, but you still need to have an official uh, post or an official announcement for this. As everybody knows, PUBG is like one of the biggest games or one of the biggest reasons why Battle Royale became such a huge genre. They have improved their gameplay, improved the mechanics, added, added new weapons, added new maps, added new seasons and so much more. So I just don't know whether adding a new game as PUBG 2.0 will do any good. What is their plan and what is the strategy? I still have no idea about. It is similar to how Overwatch has is coming up with Overwatch 2, which is some sort of an expansion. So maybe PUBG 2.0 is also a sort of an expansion to PUBG. We still have to wait and see whether it is actually coming out or not. Well, that is all we had to cover in this week of Top Gaming News, the very first episode in 2021. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like and comment down below what you think about any of the news we just discussed. And do not forget to subscribe to Gamer Connect for more awesome video coming this very year moving forward. We don't want to miss any one of that. My name is Gin Manus, and as usual, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and keep on playing games.